So next up, uh, we have the founder of Definity, Dominic Williams. Dominic will explain how the science behind landing people on the moon and building the most valuable tech companies helped power the growth behind his company, Definity. Dominic, welcome to the stage. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, has uh, anybody here heard of Definity? One person, two people, okay. Um, so, uh, my name's Dominic Williams. I'm founder and chief scientist of, uh, it's actually a not-for-profit foundation. Uh, we're developing something called the Internet Computer. Um, we have sort of three research centers worldwide at the moment. Uh, one in Zurich, two in Silicon Valley. Uh, the Internet Computer uh, is uh, an extension of the Internet that will enable it to uh, host software systems and Internet services natively. Um, the network is tokenized. Uh, at the last funding round, we had a cap of about uh, just over $2, two billion. So um, it's a significant enterprise, if you can call it that. So um, I, I actually uh, decided not to go through the slides and just talk to you because I realized, looking at some of the early, earlier presentations, um, that what we're doing is, is very different. So I hope to give you a different perspective, first of all, on growth that uh, is, is coming from the sort of cutting edge of what's happening in Silicon Valley, um, on the bleeding edge of tech, and also give you some insights about future opportunities uh, for your own growth uh, related to changes that are happening uh, to the internet. So. Uh, First of all, before talking about uh, what we do and how we've grown and what opportunities there exist for you, um, I, I want to sort of hit perhaps um, the main point I would make as an entrepreneur uh, who's you know, been through many different startups in the past uh, about how you grow. Um, it's interesting watching uh, people talk. There's a lot of talk about growth hacks and pivots and you know, um, iterating on business models and things like that. Actually, my view is um, that's, that's a load of baloney. That's talking about um, practice rather than approach, okay? And it, it's a kind of uh, mythology in a way that, you know, for example, Stripe, Stripe's a great example, you know, Stripe grew to the size it is today purely through growth hacking, for example. My view is that growth is really achieved um, primarily by getting timing right and building a business on the cusp of a wave. Like, as an entrepreneur, it's far, far easier to um, surf a wave than it is to paddle out. So. What I'd ask you to do, first of all, is when you um, listen to these growth talks, is look at the uh, timing of the companies that grew, when were, they, when were they founded, and try and correlate them with industry trends. And I think in most cases, you'll see that timing was very, very important to uh, each of these uh, organization successes. And the point being, that as entrepreneurs, you delude yourself if you think that all it is to, the, 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 your, your, your path to growth is practice, right? Your path to growth is first of all, positioning yourself on the cusp of a wave and then employing practice to surf the wave. Like that's the number one thing you can do. Get your timing right and Build, build it in, a, in, a, in an area that's expanding rapidly. Because if you don't, no matter how good you are at practice, you're not going to go anywhere. And I think that's one of the uh, secrets of kind of Silicon Valley that perhaps on isn't that well understood. You know, the companies that really explode and do brilliantly are always established on the cusp of a wave. And if you get too close to the practice, you get too obsessed about refining your business model and pivots and growth hacks and virality and this and that, 
you'll miss the biggest thing of all, which is that even if your practice is pretty bad, even if you're not that good at what you're doing, if you build on the cusp of a wave and surf it, you can do amazingly well. Meanwhile, you can be the best startup practitioner in the world if you're paddling out rather than, a, rather than surfing a wave, you're not going to go anywhere. Anyway, the relevance of this, I suppose, to what I'm saying is that, you know, we, we certainly have benefited from a wave. Um, there's an enormous wave coming to the internet. There are fundamental changes. In our case, um, we are piggybacking uh, issues that are emerging with the internet, um, that are emerging with the traditional technology stack, and addressing them in a kind of logical way. So, uh, first of all, we were able to, uh, you know, apply the Silicon Valley playbook because we did surf a wave. Uh, the wave in our case was open computing. So, uh, we are a tokenized platform. And in uh, between 2017 and 2018, we raised an awful lot of money. We used a new business model in the sense that we're developing an extension to the internet. And we did that through a not-for-profit foundation in Switzerland, which is funded to create a network where the value exists in the network itself and in the tokens, which the foundation sells to raise money for its operations, which we give to employees to incentivize them. And that has allowed us in the space probably of two years to build one of the best technology teams in Silicon Valley. We are hiring the world's best researchers and engineers straight out of Google, Facebook, IBM, Microsoft, and expanding worldwide. So uh, by being on the cusp of a wave, we've been able to raise uh, very significant funding, uh, well over $100 million. We've been able to build one of the best teams in technology today. And we've been able to pursue a very major um, big problem. So uh, enough about waves and what we do um, and how, how, how it helped us. What is the change coming to the internet and why would it be of interest to you? Um, the internet computer is created by a protocol. So the internet is created by a protocol called IP. And the internet, internet protocol combines private networks to create the internet, which is a giant public virtual network. Um, and the internet, actually, everybody is here because of the internet. The internet, because it's a public network, provided an open, permissionless environment, which provided a fantastic foundation for all of the creativity, innovation, entrepreneurialism, and investment um, that we all know about and pursue. Um, over time, though, the internet has become rather more like AOL. Um, and there are a number of reasons for this. First of all, although the internet provides connectivity, the internet can connect computers. Whenever you create a system or a service, you have to run it on typically a cloud service today, which means that your software system or internet service runs from a handful of enormous rooms called hyperscale data centers run by an even smaller handful of big tech companies. So that's not very open. And on top of the internet, you now have these big, uh, big tech plays, monopolistic big tech plays, um, which have corralled a lot of the user data and functionality and relationships. And when you build on top, um, you're subject to something called platform risk. I mean, Zing is an example, right? Zing is the social, social games company built on top of Facebook. IPO was very successful. Facebook changed the rules. Um, three months later, it lost 85% of its value. That's an example of platform risk. The internet computer extends the internet, so the internet itself can natively uh, host software systems and internet services. And it makes it possible to recreate internet services using something called autonomous software that enables services to run as part of the internet. So you could go and create open Salesforce, open LinkedIn, open WhatsApp. And these services would run as part of the internet. And as a business model, 
uh, that accompanies that opportunity. And so uh, there's two pieces, I suppose, and I, I can give you in my last 15 seconds. One is that, um, you know, right, right away, there's a wave coming, which is the transformation of the internet and the way that we can build internet services. And also, you know, for platforms, one of the best ways you can grow yourself is to provide other people's other 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 people and other organizations uh, with a route to growth, and that's one of the uh, key pieces, core strategies um, that are driving the Internet Computer Project forward. So, anyway, thank you very much for my slightly unconventional talk. Thanks. <laughs>